this very non-phallic episode of Craftsman of the Deep, we're going to be making an initiative tracker tower out of this half-inch XPS foam. I started by marking off two 1-inch wide by 13-inch long sections and cut these out as carefully as I could by hand. I don't currently own a hot wire table, but a box cutter knife worked just fine so long as I took my time and didn't rush the cuts. Obviously, they didn't come out as precise as using something like a proxon would have allowed, but for my purposes here, it'll work. After both pieces were ready, I made a mark a half inch down from the top and then marked off one inch gaps following that for a total of ten and a half inches all the way down. This half inch section at the top I designed in purely for aesthetic reasons and isn't really needed, but like I've said before, I'm extra. I made sure that the marks also carried over across the sides of both pieces and connected to the back as the grooves I was going to be making needed to relatively line up. Then I started cutting. Using an X-Acto knife, I cut two shallow grooves per mark I'd made, one just above and one just below. Doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but it will in a minute. Did this for all the marks on both sides before using this handy dandy yellow tool thing I got on a model making kit to widen the grooves and add more depth. It definitely was nice to use, but you could totally just use a pen or even a blunt pencil to achieve the same thing. I did end up coming in afterward and making these grooves even more angled and pronounced with the X-Acto knife, but again, this really wasn't a needed step. In the end, I had these nice little decorative sections between each gap, and I think it makes the piece look more interesting overall. Next was numbering. Starting at the first one inch gap from the top, I drew in the numbers 1 to 10 all the way down the length of both sections of foam. I kept them next to each other through this whole process so that I could keep the numbers as similar as possible on both sides. After everything was drawn on and I was happy with how they looked, I went back with the pen again and this time made deep impressions into the foam for each number. Had to go over these several times to make sure they looked right, but I think the extra time taken was worth it to make sure they would really pop later on during the painting stage. Finally, it was time to cut out my little decorative top piece. I eyeballed and marked in a gap on both sides and cut these chunks out before doing the same for the front. Repeated these steps for the other section and boom, weird little top piece that adds no practical value. After all that, we could move on to the structure of the tower itself. I wanted to make sure that this thing would be strong enough to hold up to the years of physical abuse that I'm sure my players and I will be dishing out, so I got this 12 inch long metal rod from my local hardware store. My plan was to cut a wide enough groove into the back of both foam sections that the rod could slot in between them snugly. Marking out the center I went ahead and got my super cheap Walmart hot glue gun warming up. I thought I could melt these grooves easily and quickly into the foam, and with a better gun, that might have been doable. In reality, I'm assuming due to the overall eh quality of the tool I was using, it took a long time. I did finally get the metal rod to slot into both sections properly though, so the plan did eventually work. In order to make sure that both sections would stick together, I cut little lengths of toothpicks to stick into the back around the edges of my metal rod groove. I hot glued these in on one side and then did the same on the opposite side, making a kind of foam metal sandwich. The gap between them was still larger than I wanted, even after pressing it down until the glue cooled, but I could live with it. After marking and cutting out some square indentations on both sides of the number gaps for no reason other than it would look better this way, I could move on to the part that makes the magic happen, magnets. I'm using the same 3mm ones here that I used on my magnetic terrain because A, they work really well, and B, I still had a bunch left over. Using the hot glue gun to melt holes into the center of my pointless indentations, I inserted magnets up and down both sides of the tower. Thus far, I was really liking the weight of this thing. It had a good, uh, girth. Next, I followed up with detailing. I wanted this tower to look like some kind of ancient stone obelisk, so I went back through and used a pen to draw cracks and crumbled areas randomly across all four sides. After cutting them out extremely shallowly, I widened them with the same pen and even took a millimeter or two off here and there with the X-Acto knife to add another layer of age to it. This definitely gave me the desired look, and the final step was to roll up aluminum foil and grind it all over the surface. This gives the foam a really rocky texture and perfectly complements the cracks and crevices that I had already carved in. For the magnetic bases of what would eventually be the nameplates for PCs and monsters, I ended up cutting out these vaguely half-inch square cubes. I then melted holes into one side of them, the same way I did with the tower itself, and fit each one with a magnet. These worked like a charm, and stuck to their counterparts exactly as I'd wanted. Half an hour later, I had all of them set up. Moving on to the base, I wanted to make sure that it would be wide enough so that the tower wouldn't be toppling over at the slightest jostling. Ended up stacking four squares of foam that I'd cut smaller with each layer, and then painstakingly carving a hole through each one. This was especially difficult with the top layer, as it ended up being less than a quarter of an inch thick all the way around. This layer was more for show than support though, so I kept going. After hot gluing each of these layers together, I went ahead and inserted the tower for... testing. I really wanted to make sure that it, once it went in, it, it couldn't get pulled out easily. <clears throat> Moving on. Next came all the detailing for the base itself. Again, I wanted this thing to have an ancient stone monument kind of feel, so I marked off where the brickwork would be and even added some heavily cuneiform inspired writing to the bottom layer. I used all the same techniques I'd used on the shaft. I mean, tower. Tower. I used all the same techniques I used on the tower itself to detail the section up and then followed with aluminum foil again. With all of the carving and design work out of the way, it was time for sealing and painting. 
I use matte Mod Podge to cover the entire thing first, which helps the foam to harden and make the whole thing stronger. With that out of the way, I first put on a base coat of raw umber from the set I got off Amazon. I wanted a dark undertone just in case there were any spots I'd miss with the coat. As always, I'll link this particular paint set in the description down below if you want to check them out for yourself. Next, I did a mixture of burnt sienna and gray to make sure this thing had an almost sandstone-like appearance to it. Once that was applied, I followed up with variations of the mix to give random stone sections slight differences in color, and then, once all of my coating had completely dried, I went in with some very light dry brushing. This helps to really bring out all the stone texturing I'd done, as well as to highlight the numbers and ancient symbols on the base. Again, I'm no master terrain painter, but for a relatively rushed job, I think it turned out pretty well. The last step was to apply a wash to darken up all those little cracks and imperfections. I recommend checking out Black Magic Craft's video on how to make washes. The guy seriously has some of the best tips and tricks out there, and this particular wash I copied directly from his instructions. Back over to our little half-inch nameplate bases, I wanted to make sure that these things look almost like wooden posts that would stick out of the sides of the tower. To that end, I used a metal wire brush to scrape the sides of each of them, which took a while. Obviously, you don't want to be breathing in all the little particles of foam that get scraped off during this process, so please wear a mask if you're going to be doing something like this yourself. Good ventilation is always a plus. I followed the scraping with really roughening up the non-magnet ends of each of the bases. This isn't absolutely necessary, but I think it makes them more convincingly look like wood from any angle. After mod podging and base coating all 20 of these little things, just like I had the tower, I dry brushed a light tan on them to bring out those final details and could finally take a breather. After that, I made my own custom name plates for my players and some enemies I knew they were going to end up fighting at some point, and printed them out on cardstock that was left over from my last video. Cut these out and then use the exacto knife to make about a 1 8 to 1 quarter inch deep cut into the ends of my little wooden bases. Slotted in the name plates and bam, we have ourselves some initiative trackers. This whole project probably took me about four days in total to complete, but obviously I wasn't working exclusively on it every minute of the day. All in all, I think it'll definitely work for my table. There are some improvements I would probably add in a future version of this thing, but for now, it'll do the job. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to drop a like and a subscription. The next few videos are actually going to be all part of a short series I'm starting up about building and running a five-room dungeon from initial concept to completed custom terrain, so stay tuned. It's actually going to be for a one-shot I'll be running for my players in a couple of months, so if your name is any of the following, you are forbidden from watching the next couple videos on Pain of Death. I don't care how attractive you think I sound, Jonathan, you can't watch the next series. You hear me, Jonathan? You cannot watch the next series.